Imagine never having to stare at charts again. No more emotional trading decisions, no more missed opportunities, no sleepless nights during drawdowns. You simply give an AI your portfolio and it handles everything. Well, that's exactly what happened in Alpha Arena. There were six AI models, including ChatGPT, Claude, and DeepSeek. Each were given $10,000 in real trading capital to trade crypto on Hyperliquid. Within days, DeepSeek was up 120%. Twitter exploded. This is the future of trading, they said. You don't even need to be a good trader anymore. But how did this all turn out? Well, in today's episode, we're going to be dissecting exactly what happened when you try and use AI to replace systematic or normal trading. You'll also discover why the 120% gain was actually a massive red flag and not a success story. We'll also talk about the areas where we think AI can actually help us as traders and where they can provide us an advantage. So can AI actually trade better than us? Well, the answer might surprise you. Let's get straight into this episode. Imagine you could stop trading and let an AI handle it all for you. One of these models was up 100% plus in just a couple of days. Now, this guy gave $10,000 to six models individually. And the whole purpose of this test was to see if AI could manage a portfolio better than a you know regular human or traditional kind of trader. How this worked was it was called Alpha Arena and it had six main models. So the six models were Claude, Sonnet, DeepSeek, ChatGPT, Gemini, Grok, and Gwen. Uh, Gwen is like a Chinese model. It's less known, but it's, it's still a decent model. Um, and they were all handling $10,000 uh, in real capital each. And it was being automated automatically executed on Hyperliquid, which is a kind of decentralized exchange uh, in crypto. Now, primarily the models were analyzing markets um, in real time and then executing trades and managing positions based on how they interpreted that live market data kind of coming in. Um, all trades were transparent on the website, and it's also a very beautiful website. You can type it into Google now. It's called Alpha Arena. Um, and he has taken away the historical performance, which is a bit unfortunate, but we'll, we'll, I'll try and put a screenshot on Twitter or, or somewhere on this video, and you can kind of have a look over it. Um, but primarily the outcome was that all the models uh, ended up in the red for the most part. Now, one model, uh, DeepSeek, did make, I think it was 120-ish percent uh, by October 28th, if I'm not mistaken, or like 29th. Um, and that performed you know, way better than a lot of these other models. Um, I think this gets into kind of the first main concern, which is kind of Pedmas, which he was talking about with it being a complete black box model, right? We had no idea really how uh, it was interpreting these uh, kind of live market data and it actually coming to a decision. It was primarily given a prompt. I think you can look up the prompts on the website where it's basically just saying like, analyze this market data and, and make you know decisions based on, on that of how you want to manage your capital and where you want to put it for these different sort of uh, tokens that were being traded. Um, my other main concern as well of this was that one, hedge funds have had this for a lot longer. Um, I saw a lot of people on Twitter when this first came out, they were saying, oh, this is going to revolu you know, revolutionize trading. You don't actually have to be a good trader. You can just have an AI take positions and manage positions for you. Um, but for the most part, these are just well-trained models, but they're not trained on anything specifically trading-wise, or they're not even trained on anything that's specifically got an edge. They are just generally trained models, and you know it's just kind of coming up with a random walk sort of decision of where it wants to manage its capital. Um, obviously, it's getting fed in live market data, which is a nice element, um, but primarily it doesn't necessarily do anything in detecting edges or something that's going to be long-term. Um, primarily, the, the actual best decision any of these AIs could have done was just taking like a very long-term portfolio uh, position. But the I think the event was only around 30 days. It was actually, I think, maybe a bit less. Um, that was my main kind of concern. Uh, do, Penman, do you want to kind of go into your second? Yeah. So um, my second concern is the source of data that is used, right? I don't know the specifics of what data is used, but I'm assuming mostly price data, maybe funding, whatever it's mostly available on the platform. Um, and if you're going to be searching for alpha in that type of data, it's going to be a hard time, right? I, I, everyone has access to the same, when everyone has access to the same data, it's kind of difficult to find something that someone else hasn't seen it. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot make money, in with price data, I'm saying that usually whatever is in price data is already known, like it's risk premium. And finding alpha there is going to be pretty complicated. So putting uh, uh, models that optimize for um, whatever they are seeing on that data is just going to be capturing a lot of noise, right? At least in my opinion, um, most of the data carries a very significant bur a noise burden. and these machine learning algorithms, like you were saying, machine learning, AI, whatever you want to call it, like they are not the same. I'm not saying machine learning and, and AI are the same, but what I'm saying is that when you are optimizing data with these type of uh, machines, 
yeah, you are going to pick up a lot of noise, and that's why you see so many like you see so many traders and good traders saying that they never used AI or machine learning to find strategy because that's not the way you find edge. Um, so I, I'm very not optimistic on that side as well. Yeah, because yeah. initially when this first came out, especially because some of the initial performance from a lot of the models were quite strong. Also, I think one thing that made people sort of believe this was going to work was that um, I think it was ChatGPT and like one other performed instantly out of the gate really poorly for the most part. And then these two other models kind of were way ahead, pushing the complete opposite side of things and, and really, you know, making up returns in the first couple of days. And I think people then kind of by that selection thought, well, oh, these models must be more trained on financial data and like are better at making a decision, which you know, maybe some part of that is true, but also at the same time, if you just handed five random like num number generator or decision generated decisions and you gave it each 10K capital, I would say it probably looks somewhat similar to this uh, kind of random walk in essence where you'll get a couple, you know, really sub performance and a couple of uh, big performers. This also does lead to my, my second main concern with this is they were all using like max leverage pretty much all the time. So the returns in essence of like, you know, making 100% in a couple of days, it was only realistic in the sense that it had you know 10x leverage 20x leverage etc uh, to be able to put on pretty much all risk of that account to be able to compound that fast and it was just able to make a, a couple of lucky strings of guesses basically for the most part um two actually i guess it would be third is the sample size is only like 30 days especially when initially i think i put a tweet quite early on when this first came out because i love the idea i think he pres presented it super well on his website the website looks really nice and clean uh, and also it's a cool idea to you know experiment with and, and test out but the key thing was that when people were kind of making assumptions already it was like on two or four days of sample size of data even after 30 days it's really it's not enough data really to draw any conclusions of how solid these uh models are necessarily for trading long term it would have to be a multi-year thing or you know hundreds and hundreds of samples um, and even then the way they are built they're not really built on any systematic edge it's, it's very hard to say if like if this is something that is you know generating alpha let's say uh, over time yeah well I agree and uh it's it merges very well in, into my next uh point is that like if you have a coin flip game even um and if you put like 100 people playing it off or 100 uh, games or whatever, and I'm assuming a fair coin, like 50-50, there's someone that is going to win all the games, right? That's going to have a linear, almost linear equity curve always growing, right? And it doesn't mean that that person had edge. No, it's just the nature of, of, uh, of probability. Someone wins out of complete luck. And when you have these black box models like we were talking about and low sample size and especially... If you add leverage into it, some performances will look amazing, and but you don't really know if that's edge or just randomness. You just got with the the lucky hand then there, right? Uh, so that would be my concern. Yeah, completely. I also got one other question. I think it was in uh, my DMs where someone was asking, you know, how does this sort of AI approach of border trading compare to classic systematic approach like that we primarily talk about, right? So risk premiums or just, you know, backtesting, et cetera, first and then kind of building stuff on top of this. Um, we have, I think, touched upon it a bit, but primarily anything around the AI sort of machine learning world. Uh, there's a couple of great books out there. I think Ernest Chan is probably a good book to, for most systematic traders to kind of read into. He's got a couple of books around it. Um, but even if you don't go through him and, and study other pieces of uh, kind of uh, literature, most of the time, machine learning is incredibly difficult to get it working on a signal basis uh, because a lot of it instinctively is overfitting. So you have to have very good measures and very good testing protocols to be able to test something and actually find if something that is, is pure signal and not just kind of fitting to noise. Um, and then two, a lot, at least from, I think, on a retail side that's possible to create, you can maybe apply some machine learning in like portfolio management and potentially like risk management. I think those side of things of um, being better of like position sizing and, and uh, how much you allocate in each one of your strategies. I think it can do some good analysis on that. Uh, but actually for generating new signals and like taking trades and all that sort of stuff, a lot of that is is being obbed away in the sense where all the best funds are able to do that at a way higher rate than any retail traders are you know, possibly going to be able to do. And I think also it's also a huge like knowledge gap. Uh, like I, I, I don't for one second say that I, I could build a machine learning model that's going to be so good that it's going to be able to like take amazing trades on live market because uh, I just know that's definitely not my strength and then also from everything I've read online it's, it's very difficult to do in the first place yeah completely agree and 
even for risk management, like you were saying and stuff like that, and I see, like I've seen a lot of content and work from, for example, Ernest Chan saying that, and it, but even for the retail trader, um, I, I don't think that's really the way to go, right? You can just get a few heuristics like together, like something basic and go from there and, and you'll risk uh, much less uh, doing some mistake that you don't really understand. For example, myself, I'm not, a very big st statistics guy, right? Or uh, or understand the math behind everything to the to the absolute perfect level. And so to edge against my own ignorance in that in that in that part, like I I, I try to keep everything very simple and uh, very even though it's not optimal and maybe I'm I'm abdicating in there a few BPS of performance every year. I tend to prefer to keep stuff simple and apparent, and I know the risk that I'm taking. Yeah, that's that's just my view, and so these things always cloud when they start clouding a lot. The intuition behind these decisions, I always try to, I always get scared of it and keep the the simplest way possible. I, I completely agree, and it kind of leads me perfectly to my next point, which is primarily around I think in systematic trading, right? This is the sh shiny object syndrome. Uh, like you may have like heard this term in other areas, like in business, et cetera. But in systematic trading, this is 100% it, at least in my opinion, because everyone at some point in the systematic trading journey, or if they're trying to become, let's say, more algorithmic, et cetera, has always tinkered or you know considered, maybe if I add some machine learning on top of this, it's, it's going to be way better. Maybe if I optimize using this one particular method, it's going to be way better. And I'm not going to have to deal through the pain of drawdowns. And it's going to be able to compound so much faster and all this sort of stuff. And you know, both Pedmer and me have gone through this 100%. I, I've wasted my time on machine learning stuff at, uh, at other points. I've used it in places where it does work nicely. But for the most part, it is, as you've kind of been saying, it is one of those things where I would prefer to stick simple and something that I know can actually work rather than, you know, tinker with this for four years to maybe get something that sort of works, right? Um, or whatever, like waste a lot of months on something that ultimately isn't going to add much value and end of day, like return on what, what I could do today, which is going to improve the strategies. Um, and I think that mainly that comes from is that everyone wants to be able to be the, the smartest person. They want to be the person that uncovers this way of doing machine learning that's going to save you all this time and trouble and you don't have to go through the normal trend following drawdowns that every other kind of systematic trader ha has to. Um, and I, I think that often just leads down to the road where you're not going to get really anything done. Yeah, it's better to keep your your risk apparent, in my view. And but we were talking a bit out um, like uh, off off the pods before we started off. And I found it interesting that the models, if you check like the equity curve, actually from the 18th of October until like 28th of October, it, it, one of the models actually. Uh, like at a significant performance compared to the market. Again, I'm not talking about leverage. I'm just talking about directionally. Um, it, and it's quite significant. Like where did he capture that those returns from? Um, and, and then it kind of collapsed and went to below zero and lost all of it. Like anyone can get, I guess, what we've been trying to say, like anyone can get fooled by that short-term performance and think it is the next thing. But... It's always the same story. It just fitting to the noise and getting fooled by randomness, by short-term randomness. Completely. Like I, I saw a guy that I follow. I think he just basically replied to this with the book "Fooled by Randomness," and I thought that was like such an easy yeah. way to sum it up. Because, yeah, it, it was crazy the amount of people I saw on Twitter saying, "Oh, this is going to be the next new thing." Look how amazing it's performing. And like, you know, it was a nice rally for the first couple of days. It really did seem like even people that I, I, I would have thought they kind of know that this isn't going to work out long term. Uh, you know, they'd, they'd post, oh, look, this model's done really good. And like, oh, you can you can have really nice performance. But a lot of this is like you could get five different people and make them trade with 10,000 on max leverage. And maybe but probably one of them by most statistics will do quite well, at least for a period of time. And then you can be like, oh, well, this guy's an amazing trader. Look, he's doing so well for these past couple of days. But it ultimately, that's why sample size is so important in trading. And like, I don't want to be trading a system that has 10 trades, 20 trades. And like, that's how I'm making my conclusion. I want a decent amount of trades unless it is something that is so structural, you know, like trend falling or something. But most of the time, even in trend falling, you're going to get a good amount of trades over time. Yeah. And, and, and I also don't want to be just negative on, on, on here. Like sure. these people probably made... Uh, put a lot of effort behind this and made the effort to make it public to everyone and, and are actually trading real money, even though it's not a lot, but it's real money. 
and and I give props to the team for that and to and, and I don't know if they will be able to make it work right I never say we never say like it's a hundred percent certain that this will never work what I'm saying is that I've never found like conclusive evidence that something like this could work uh yeah you can bring up the the, the examples of putting AI to trade uh, to trade sorry to play games like chess or even League of Legends and other games like that people try the AI and, and it did quite well but those games are always like stationary in their rules right the uh, a, a chess move is always a chess move accompanied by a bunch of different uh, scenarios but in trading stuff is different statistical relationships between different features whatever are always changing and markets change all the time and the problem is that these models fit too much to that noise and i don't know how you can bypass that with with models that are designed to overfit um so it, it's pretty interesting i'll definitely be following up with this work that these guys are doing because it's very interesting but uh yeah i, I have my concerns yeah, I, I would say, at least in my perspective, love the, the website. I think as you the same as you, like, you know, doing this live and, you know, everyone gets to see it. I think that's an amazing way of like doing some marketing plus like actually providing some value to everyone so they can kind of see this on a fundamental level, like for my own portfolio, I'm not going to be adding any kind of trading model oh. to, to, to trade with my kind of money. But I will say to, to end it on a positive note around AI and like what we do use AI for, the biggest positive, at least for me, that does come from AI is definitely one, finding and uh, tweaking an idea faster. So being able to either quantify, uh, quantify something faster, get maybe a scrappy MVP faster, um, especially if you're like, you've kind of built like a full AI that kind of understands your backtesting engine. I think that can be a really cool idea and then something you can do um also the the main thing i'd say really is just consuming information faster so if i if i'm like wanting to read uh, about a sudden strategy or a sudden thing i don't know of the first thing i do nowadays is type me into ai get some general ideas and then kind of go from there and then do some more research uh what about you Penman? i mean ai it's part of my life from, uh, uh, right now right so like everything i do like in coding i'm always using ai i'm much much faster i, I can't like as someone that is not uh, that doesn't have an IT background, the time that I don't spend going through Stack Overflow like like it was back in the day when we didn't have AI or uh, going through websites to find solutions to um, to specific problems that are not uh, like um, back then you could always find a solution to a problem, but it was not always specific to what you're doing, right? It was something else general, and then you could apply the solution to your own thing. So you you would have to spend a lot of time designing that. And right now with AI, I, I get to do that in seconds, in minutes, right? Because it adapts to the problem that you are working. The context is so much sharper. Like that stuff is very important and it has... It really sp sped up a lot of things I want to do in trading and that I wasn't able to do before because I could not do that fast enough to, to compensate for the time. And right now I can. And uh, that stuff cannot be understated. You know, it's, it is it is a super important innovation for people that, that do this alone, that do this as a solo team. We don't have teams, we don't have engineers, we do everything ourselves and really open the door for solo traders to get a bit uh better we we stay on infra 